Well, brothers and sisters, our service this morning is not just for crops and industry, but also for all of life. Because we believe very strongly that all of life is uh, under God's sovereignty and that all that we do uh, can be and should be an act of worship to the Lord our God. Martin Luther uh, famously said that uh, changing a diaper uh, could be an act of worship. I'm paraphrasing there. And so uh, as we proceed on our sermon this morning, it comes from uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and part of chapter 12, uh, where we talk about faith in action. And uh, we talk about faith in action from the viewpoint of many historical biblical figures as they uh, walked through their lives in faith, but also as we are called to live our lives in faith. And so I would invite you to listen, uh, pull out your Bible if you want to follow along in the written text, that would be great. But follow along as you listen and hear God's word. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, starting at verse 1 and moving on through uh, the beginning uh, couple of verses from Hebrews chapter 12 as well. So just sit back, maybe even close your eyes if you're not following along with the, the text and listen to the scriptures. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on the earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country of they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. 
Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he learned, leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell of Gideon or Barak or Samson, Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets who, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice and gained what was promised who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned into strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women re received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain even an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised since God had planned something better for us so that together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, 
so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> this passage from Hebrews chapter 11 through to chapter 12, verse 3, is pretty much a sermon all on its own. It doesn't need a lot of explanation from me. It is very clear through this that the author of Hebrews, under the inspiration of the Spirit, is making it very clear to his immediate readers, the, the readers of, of the epistle as they would have originally received it, he is making very clear to them that they have ample examples of faith lived out in action from times before. But it is also true that we who read this letter later on, we also have examples, many, many examples of faithfulness lived out in action in our lives. We have this not only from the biblical witness, but we have this from many of the people around us living right today. And we have the example of people in our own families, in our own lives, in our own cultures, in our backgrounds, people who lived out faithful lives too. Think of our, uh, our parents, our grandparents, uh, some of us here, your own example, as you came to Canada, or your parents did, or your grandparents did, you came to Canada seeking out a better life that you felt that God was calling you to in this place. Or think about Think about our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents as they sought to do what was right during World War II, risking their lives to save the lives of others more vulnerable than themselves, or risking their lives to oppose oppression and hate. Or think about the many who are working today <clears throat> to help all the people of this world get through this pandemic and how so many of them are working in faith to serve the people of this world. Or think about the things that you do each and every day. You may not think of it this way, but I would encourage you, the scriptures encourage you to start or to restart if you used to, to think of those things that you do each and every day as acts of faith. Think about it. It may not be that you are standing in a lion's den defying the laws of the king. That may be what you are doing, but it may not be what you are doing. You may be assembling parts on an assembly line at 3M, or you may be uh, working to, to extrude fiberglass whatevers. You may be working in the field. You may be working... In education, you may be working uh, in, in volunteering at various things. You may be working in your garden. But all of these things can be acts of faith. How can they be acts of faith? They, be, they are acts of faith in that we believe in the promises of God. We believe in God first of all. But second of all, think about, <laughs> let me put it this way. When I was in high school, and probably many of you as well, when I was in high school, we had to read um, either in French class or in English class, we had to read the book L'Etranger, or The Stranger, by Albert Camus. I think that's correct. Um, and I don't know if you remember this, but part of the underlying philosophy of that book was the belief that maybe there is no reason 
that everything has happened by accident, that there is no God, there is no overarching moral authority, there is no purpose to life, it is all accidental. For me, and for you, we do not believe in that kind of existence. We believe very profoundly that there is hope, that there is a God, that there is a moral authority, that there is right and wrong. And while we acknowledge that it may be very hard sometimes in given circumstances to know always in every detail what the right and wrong thing to do are, we nonetheless cling to the promises of God. And so me washing the dishes after supper at our house is, in a way, an act of hope, an act of faith. I believe that there is a God who will provide me with tomorrow. I believe that there is a purpose to taking care of the things that God has given me. I believe that there is a, 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 a way for me to honor God by caring for my garden, my house, for doing my job. There is reason for that. We don't just plant crops to make money. We don't just help on the assembly line for a pat on the back or for a paycheck. We do these things because we trust in God. And so whether you're moving from one part of the country or one part of the world to another, or whether we are sweeping the floor, we do so as an act of faith. So brothers and sisters, let us continue to trust in the promises of God and let us live our days each and every day and every part of every day as acts of faith. For we have a great cloud of witnesses. So let us throw off all the junk that entangles us and run the race. Amen. Amen.